A healthier body, a quieter mind is now possible to start your yoga journey together with the renowned Yogi Sadhguru. Do not waste more time. Get out of the chaos without leaving home with this online tool. Click the link in the description of this video and learn more. <laughs> Time, one thing that you do. Thing. Everybody who considers themselves some kind of sadhaka or seeker, one thing that you must do to yourself is you are absolutely truthful to yourself. If you're also truthful to everybody around you, you will get other kinds of benefits with people. But I will not go that far right now. With yourself, you are one hundred percent truthful. Otherwise, all kinds of tricks keep happening. To be truthful to yourself is not a easy thing because there is lifetimes of habit of simply bullshitting yourself. And of course, <laughs> you've gone through much religious training, many of you. <laughs> So you have a very sophisticated way of bullshitting yourself. <laughs> See, uh, this is an unfortunate condition that a whole lot of human beings are in. In their experience, in their personal experience, life is like me versus the universe. Being in competition with the universe is a stupid thing to do. That's not a competition you must get into. Hello? Me versus the universe is a bad competition to get into. So, this is why yoga… Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body. The word yoga means union. Right now it's me versus the universe. This is just your psychological condition. This is not the reality. Even when you feel utterly lonely, are you still breathing? So you're transacting with the world, isn't it? Yes? You only can't get along with the people around you, but atmosphere is okay with you, food is okay if it tastes good, water is okay. You have transaction with the world, isn't it? Your existence is constantly an engagement with the universe, but your mind becomes against the universe. If you create a psychological condition that you're against or you're in competition with the universe or the cosmos, Obviously, you will feel crushed for small things. Little things will crush you. When I say little things, maybe you failed your examination, maybe you got thrown out of this university, maybe you got fired from a job, maybe somebody ditched you, maybe something else like this happened. These are all small things between life and death. Because you came here with nothing, isn't it? When you die, there is no container service for you. You die with nothing. In spite of that, most people have turned their homes into warehouses. Most people are carrying such a huge baggage on their head, as if they're carrying the whole universe on their head. This is their own psychological condition. Your thought and emotion is what you're talking about. Right? When are you going to figure out how to handle your thought and emotion? Not hers, not hers, not his, yours. When are you going to learn how to handle my thought and my emotion? At the end of your life? The only problem really with life is just this. Most human beings have taken themselves too seriously. They don't understand… You've seen on the computer screen these pop-ups? You are a pop-up on this planet. You pop up for two seconds and pop out. No, no, you must see, countless number of people like you and me have walked this planet. Oh, they were also big people. Where are they? All? Topsoil? Topsoil or no? Or maybe you're planning to go to heaven. Hello? Anybody who talks about a place, other than this place, as a better place than this, 
this is a crime against humanity. My fundamental work is to destroy all heavens so that people will learn to live well here. All these idiots who made a hell out of themselves, they want to go to heaven. They made a mess out of this place and then they want to go to heaven. I am asking you, do you have any proof? Do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and messing it up? Do you have any proof? You are already in heaven, making a mess out of it, yes? Simply because you are not even learning how to handle your basic faculties of thought and emotion, isn't it? Your only justification is, everybody is like this only, that's how it is in a madhouse. That is how it is in a madhouse, only a doctor looks crazy. <laughs> so when are you going to handle it? Slowly, at the age of sixty, I'm asking, when will you learn how to handle my thought, how to handle my emotion, how to handle my body, how to handle my chemistry, when are you going to figure this? At the end of your life? Because this culture has grown, when to do spirituality means when you're seventy, when you're no good for anything else. No, at the earliest possible time, whatever is most profound about you, not about heavens, about this life, everything that you need to know, you must know soonest, isn't it? My whole thing is, I'm constantly reminding people, there is only one enemy in your life, that's you. If you fix this one person, everything is fine with you. Yes or no? You have only one enemy, that's yourself. If you fix this one person, this is a wonderful life. So this is the beauty of your life, that this moment you can be whichever way you want to be. Now this freedom is what humanity is struggling with right now. If you are suffering your bondage, it's all right, but you are actually suffering your freedom. If your life was as fixed as any other creature's life, you would not experience any stress, you would go through it effortlessly. Now your problem is, there is freedom to be whichever way you want to be the next moment. This is what you are struggling with. If you are suffering your bondage, it's all right. If you are suffering your freedom, that's a tragedy, isn't it? Your life is not a tragedy because this happened or that happened. Your life is a tragedy because everything is happening and you are missing it. Yes? This did not happen, that did not happen, that's not a tragedy. Sun came up in the morning, but you cannot experience it. You are breathing, you cannot experience that. You are alive, you cannot enjoy that. This is a tragedy, isn't it? Yes or no? What happened, what did not happen is not the point. The most significant aspect of your life is that you are alive right now. Is that so? Everything else is secondary and incidental. Is that so? Yes? But you are not aware of your aliveness. You are busy with your psychological nonsense. Your thoughts, your emotions have become… your psychological reality has become far more important than your existential reality. What it means is, you are so enamored with your own petty creation that you are completely missing the grandeur of creator's creation, that's what it means. You do all kinds of things, but if you truly value creation, the best thing that you can do is to pay attention and to experience it, isn't it? Yes or no? What is the greatest tribute? Suppose somebody cooks some nice food, and presented it in front of you, what is the greatest tribute? That you write a poetry on it or you joyfully eat it, which is better? Somebody has done a work of art, you ignore it and give him an award. Is that great or you truly appreciate and enjoy it, is that great? If you truly value the creator and the creation, the best thing is that you lived blissfully. That is the best appreciation for the creator. One more year gone, are you still alive? And what are you alive to? What are you dead to? 
When was the last time you saw a full moon or a sunrise? When was the last time you gazed at a mountain or the ocean? Or you looked at a butterfly fly? When was the last time you saw a flower blossom or kicked a ball? When was the last time you smiled at yourself? When was the last time you looked back and could laugh at yourself, come alive? Your role in the existence is so small. Everything that happens to you largely is being done to you. Are you spinning the planet? No. Could you live if it di did not spin? Could you live? No. Are you managing the atmosphere? No, you're spoiling it but you're not managing it. <laughs> are you making your heart beat? No. Are you breathing? <laughs> Everything that's vital to life is happening, isn't it? Your business is just to become receptive to the bounty of life, to know life in its fullest way. If you're willing to be blissful, joyful, do something worthwhile about yourself or you're willing to do something worthwhile about ten people around you, we will take care of your living also. All you have to do is, to whom? Just the creation. Isn't it big enough to bow down? Isn't it big enough to bow down? Just the creation. On top of that you want one more thing? Isn't creation itself big enough to bow down, I'm asking? Isn't the mountain big enough to bow down? I find even the tree and the uh, ant big enough to bow down because not one of them can we figure. All your intelligence, you can't figure a leaf upon this tree, one leaf. So, just the sheer intelligence of everything that is happening. When you can't figure anything, what do you do? That's all I said, stay in Upasana because anyway your role is so minor in this existence that tomorrow morning if you evaporate, no problem. Only if you leave your mess here and go, problem. But if you simply evaporate, no problem for anybody, isn't it? Yes or no? So your role in your own life is so minor, so very minor, everything is being done to you, just everything. So, how can you be the hero? When you have a two-bit role, if you think you are a hero, you're making a serious mistake, isn't it? That's all I'm talking about. I'm not talking about doing any great spiritual sadhana. But if you are… if you live in truth, that is the sadhana, what else? To stop the lies that you're creating, that is all the sadhana. Searching for truth, knowing truth does not mean you have to go in search of it somewhere. It's not hiding behind the mountain, it's on this side, you know. Right now this part of the planet is dark, so will you go looking on the other side? No, it's here. Truth means just this, whatever there is, is truth. Whatever you have made up is a lie, that's all there is, isn't it? And uh, you being a hero in this existence is your rubbish, it's got nothing to do with reality. So if you understand that, you understand you have a very minor role in the existence, not just in the making of the existence, in your own life. Even if something as simple as breath or heartbeat is left in your hand, you will be a complete mess within a minute. Yes or no? So, I am not saying anything new, not a teaching, just reminding you the reality of what your life is. And that's all living in truth means, that you've not made up anything. You're not writing your own story, you're, you're trying to live life. 
if you live life, you can only live it the way it is. Only if you make up a story, you can make your own story, isn't it? If you are doing fiction, you can make it up the way you want. If you're living life, you can live life only the way it is. There is no other way to live. So do not think it's some kind of a teaching. That's how life is. So just live it, don't make up any story. If you make up an, a story which is not true and believe it is true, when your script comes to an end, then you'll be at loss because <laughs> there's nothing. If you go with reality, it is on, whether you're alive or dead, it's on. You being with it is the safest way to be, best way to be. That's the only way you can experience life. Otherwise, you will experience the treachery of your own words, nothing else. Recognize people around you for the best that you have seen in them. In recognizing the best instead of the worst, you will kindle, nurture and receive the best of everyone. Whatever you pay attention to will naturally grow, at least for you. Every human being that you meet, there's a good side to them, there is a nasty side to them. If you pay attention to the nasty side, your mind will be preoccupied with the nastiness. Somebody else's nastiness will become yours and because of that, you will receive more and more of that from all around you. If you pay attention to the best, <laughs> even though in some people it may be a minuscule, if you pay attention to the best, it will grow, at least in your mind, in your experience it will grow. There is a good chance it will grow in them also. Well, when you live in this world, when you're active, so many people will say and do variety of nasty things to you. But if you pay attention to that, you will stop in your tracks. If you pay attention to that, that may exist even in those people who are continuously spewing venom. One thing is, your mind shall never become nasty. Another thing is, there is always a possibility even they will turn around. I've conducted programs in the prisons, both in India and the United States. I've met some of the criminals or convicts who have done terrible things in their life, but many of them have transformed themselves because of simple forms of yoga. Above all, when they were with me, they were absolutely wonderful people. This is what you can do. You heard of an Angulimala turning into a sage. You have heard of Valmiki turning into a great sage. Like this, there are many stories, only a few became famous. Many others are there who have transformed their nastiness to their wonderful nature, simply because somebody paid attention to their wonderful nature. So please, whoever you meet, whatever the best you see in them, you don't have to imagine something. Whatever the best you see in them, pay attention to that. Hold that as a standard for those people to rise to, rather than holding their nastiness in your mind and allowing them to descend to their worst. This is a possibility that you have an opportunity to exercise every moment of your life. Let's make it happen. If you look into your own mind, if you look into your own persona of what you consider yourself to be, normally what you call as a personality is essentially different levels of constipation. I don't like this, I can't stand this, I can't do this, I can't do that, I only like this, I cannot like that. 
different levels of constipation. What causes this constipation? Constipation in its uh, physiological sense means constriction of a tract. Here, it's constriction of one's mind and consciousness that it's held. There's no free flow of life. It's restricted because your ability to experience your life is only through the instruments of your body and your mind. Either your body or your mind in some way constricted means your ability to experience life also gets constipated. This happens in many ways. <laughs> You will be surprised, many of you think you've grown out of those things, but when you're ten years of age, your mama, your uncle, I mean, your mama said something, he called you an idiot. Ah, now you're fifty, but still forty years ago he called you an idiot, it still bothers you. When you see his face, he called me an idiot. <laughs> like this it goes on. The more concretized your persona is or your personality is, the more nicks and wounds you carry upon yourself. And these are not physiological wounds to heal because they are self-inflicted wounds. These are being carried as badges of life's experience, so they don't go. Because of this, I like this guy, I don't like this guy, I love this person, I hate this person, I can't stand this person, all this has happened. Next twenty-four hours, you must do this. All these mamas, friends, enemies, nonsense, you don't have to tell them, I love you. Not necessary. Within yourself, you must come to a total sense of acceptance of everything. So, somebody said something, somebody did something, somebody stepped on your foot, somebody stepped on your head. Twenty-four hours, it's a small prescription, only for twenty-four hours come to an absolute acceptance of everything. Your mental things, your emotional things, your bodily things, every damn thing, and the social things. Just simply accepting it as it is. You don't have to do anything with anybody, just within yourself. If you just do this, life will happen on a larger scale. Of all the things in the world, of all the things that a human being can do, why yoga? Everything that human beings can do is essentially an expression of who they are. Somebody sings a song, somebody dances, somebody writes a book, somebody paints a picture. Whatever else we do is an expression of who you are. You may be conscious of it, you may be unconscious of it, but still everything that you say, everything that you do, everything that comes out of you is essentially an expression of who you are.
So yoga in that way is diametrically opposite to this because it's not an expression of who you are. It's about determining as to who you are. It's about determining as to what you want to be. Changing the very fundamentals of one's existence. Today there is substantial <laughs> medical and scientific evidence to show that the very fundamentals of the activity of your brain, your chemistry, even your genetic content can be changed by practicing different systems of yoga. This needed uh, no confirmation because we've always witnessed this. But today there is scientific data to prove this. So this is not an expression of who you are, this is about determining the nature of you wish to… who you wish to be, changing the fundamental ingredients which has made you who you are. So yoga as a system needs much more involvement than any other things that one… any other other forms of things that we do.